In the solo mode of Manila 2076, you control a two-person team of mercenaries as they infiltrate the Nexus Megacorp's data centers. Your objective is to steal as much data as you can and avoid getting tracked by the InfoSec. In the solo games, you will be controlling two characters as a team of mercenary and you will be going against a player who is the InfoSec. Story-wise, the objective of the InfoSec is to trace you, hackers, while you are trying to steal data from the data centers. To set up the game with two character cards and one InfoSec card, it doesn't matter, it's just for reminder that you're controlling two and that you're going against one. And then shuffle the data cards and the action cards and place them in a face down deck. And then you randomly insert a times two modifier card into the action deck, give it a shuffle, and that's the setup. You don't start with any action cards and any overclock cards. Now let's go to the round overview. Each round you will perform the following steps. You deal six cards in the center of the table. This will form the round's data center. And then you deal an action card to each character, including the infosec. After dealing the cards to the players, including the infosec, you will then select the mission type for this round based on the power of the InfoSec's action card. Now, the action card for the InfoSec we have right now is number 2. That means we are going for the Bacter mission. The rule here is if the InfoSec's power is less than 5, we'll go for the Bacter mission. If the InfoSec's power is greater than 5, you go for the Assault mission. If the InfoSec's power is equal to 5, it is the player's choice. If a mission is a backdoor mission, you put the token on the leftmost data card with this side face up. If it is an assault mission, you put it on the rightmost data card with this side face up. Now for this example, we are going with the backdoor mission. So you put the token on the leftmost data card. And then the next step is to draw four action cards to your hand as the player. In this case, we have three pink cards and one yellow card. The most important part here are the numbers. The next step is to choose an action card from your hand and place it face up on a character. Do this again for the other character and the info set. The last card on your hand will be the special action that you will use this round. The thing here in the base rules is that if you are going for the Bacter mission, you are fighting to be the lowest number action card, to be the first one to get the first three cards in the data center. If you are fighting for the assault mission, you want to be the highest number of action cards to be the first one to get the first three cards. So for this game, we have drawn a backdoor mission. So as the player, you will have four action cards to your hand and you will assign that to each player. You want to be the lowest. So I'm going to give the card three to this character. So we ha he will have a total of five. And we will give the seven to the infosec so that he will have the highest. His total now is 9. However, as you can see, this character already has 9 on his value, meaning no matter what we add to his card, he will have the highest total of action cards. So we will just give him number 4. After assigning the action cards to the characters and to the infosec, you will now execute your special action. The card that remained in our hand is a pink card. Your action depends on the type of action card that you have. If you have a pink card which is an attack action, you will remove a trace counter from the infosec. If you have the blue card, which is the sneak action, you may change this round's mission type. If you have the hack action, which is the yellow card, you may choose a character, convert all unsafe data of one color into the safe data. Safe data that you obtain this way ignores the maximum limit. In this case, this special action is useless because this is the first round. So now, after using it, we will discard it. Now it is discarded and you are left with the three characters having their own action cards. Now is the time to take turns to get cards from the center. Starting from the player with the lowest total, the lowest total of this character is 5, the, this one is 13, and the infosec is 9, meaning this character will get to get cards first. So, this player will get these three cards, three yellow cards, and add it to his collection. The second player, which is the infosec, will get 
the two cards. And then the last player, which is also us, will get the last card. In case of ties, the player will get to choose who will go first. After getting cards from the data center, you will now choose one of your cards that you played to be your key action this round. Data cards that you got this round with the same color as the key action that you have chosen will be installed as safe cards. You will then install them vertically. Let's do that now. Since I only play the yellow cards here, I will only get to choose a yellow card. And all of the yellow cards that I got will be installed vertically, meaning it is installed safely. You can only install a maximum of three safe data cards per color. Having these three here means I already have maximum number of safe data cards for the yellow card. Any excess that goes over the limit will then be discarded. And then, after installing those cards, you will discard the action card that you use. Let's move on to the next player. This character only got a blue card, and the cards that he played is colored pink, which is attack. He can choose that. He chose the pink card to be his key action. However, the card that he got is not pink, therefore, it will be installed as an unsafe data. Characters can only install a maximum of 3 unsafe data per color. If a character goes over the limit of the unsafe data, the game ends and you immediately lose. Now, let's go to the InfoSec's turn. All data cards that the InfoSec get are turned face down and converted into a trace card. Currently, the InfoSec has two trace cards. If ever, in the game, the InfoSec gets more than eight trace cards, the game ends and you lose immediately. And that is the loop of the game. The game will go through this loop until all data cards ran out. So there are two ways to lose this game. It's either the infosec gets 8 trace cards or you get more than 3 unsafe data cards for a color. And you win without getting traced or going over the limit of unsafe data cards. And then we will go to the end game and scoring. The result of the game is based on the following conditions. You will get a perfect ending if both of your characters score 15 points or more each. You will get a good ending if the sum of the character's score is 30 or more. Bad ending will be the sum of the character's score is below 30. How do you score your game? Each unsafe and safe cards are worth 1 point at the end of the game. And that is how you play Manila 2076 Solo Rules.